I don't normally use picks, so I mess it up. I mess it up. It's Joyce Manor's Constant Headache uh, guitar tutorial. Uh, it's one of my favorite punk rock uh, emo revival type songs. I think it falls under emo revival. Um, it's a pretty sick song. And um, yeah, like I said, don't usually use a pick. And uh, I just did it because I know most people do. Uh, I'm really used to like using my fingers and then like actually strumming the chords and then like even picking out the pattern. Um, so it, yeah, I apologize it was a little stiff. But basically, we'll get into the video. Okay, so I'm going to teach you from the top. The first thing that actually comes before the riff is actually this C-sharp, I think, C-sharp power chord that you just hold on to and you go. Yeah, I think it's all down strokes. You hold it for like two measures. And then you go on to the riff. Um, so there's actually a couple of different ways to play this riff. And I'll tell you about the way I do it and then the way that I think uh, the band normally does it. Um, so the way I do it, and I think it's um, much, much easier, and it feels more smooth too. Um, basically, you use, uh, I think this is like a shell voicing shape. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a really interesting chord. It consists of a 1-3-7. Uh, I don't want to confuse you, but um, yeah, it's actually uh, commonly used in like jazz, um, which is kind of cool. But anyway, that's not important. Uh, this basically have your middle finger on the 7th, um, index on the 6th, and then your your ring finger on the 8th of the G string. So yeah, so basically A7, D6, G8. Um, and then so what you do is you pluck this, the A string first, and then the D, A, G, and then, um, oh yeah, be sure to bar this. Um, just these first two strings are these, uh, these two strings right here, which is the D and the G. The reason why is because you're going to, um, you're going to let go of your, your ring right here actually, and then pluck that. So basically what I'm saying is A, D, A, G, and then you let go of your index. That's the first part. So. All right, next, how I do is I just move that same exact shape up the strings up here. So now it should be middle finger seven on E and then A6 and then D8. And then so you do this, you go E, A, B, D. And then so after you've done that, yeah, at this point, your riff should sound like this. do is uh, get your ring finger and slide that up three frets so it goes from 8 to 11 and now put your index two frets below it so you know your index is on that same D string and it's gonna be on the ninth fret so what we're gonna do is you're gonna pluck this and did you see what I do my fingers there so basically you're gonna be moving from this so you're gonna be moving from this right this shape this shell voicing you slide it up three frets your, your, in, um, your ring, and then your index can be right here. So pluck this. So look, I'm plucking with my ring, let go. Now I'm gonna place my middle on the 11th fret and my, uh, um, the 11th fret of the A string, and my ring on the 11th fret of the G string. 
Now you get this shape. And then you go. So now it should sound like. All right, so basically now all you got to do is slide this shape you have right here two frets but um you should, it's actually you're gonna have your index crawl up right here so it's actually gonna be nine eight nine so um and then you're going to do this that's nine eight six eight and then that's the whole riff and you just play that twice um, so I'm going to show you really slowly, like really slow. Um, I'll try to sh t uh, call out the string name too. So it's A, D, A, G, let go, G, E, A, D, slide up three frets. slow down it should just sound like this um, there's actually a slight variation when you repeat it for the second time because you don't do the full you just go uh, let me show you what I mean chords um, okay but what I said earlier in the video is that um, there's different ways to play this and yes there is there's actually um, what the band does is they slide down five frets um, it feels a little unnatural for me so that's why I, I just may move this shape upwards <laughs> to another set of strings um, basically it would sound kind of like this I'm not as great with it but and then this shape right here um, I think this is like a if I were to name the chord, I think it's like a B, B major six, I think, something like that. It's some sort of like indie-esque chord, actually. And then you would go like this. Um... That's how the band plays it, I'm pretty sure. Um, pretty confident in that one. So basically, you just go, and it, so, oh, let me call out these. So two, one, three, two. Uh, that's two on the A, one on the D, three on the G, and two on the B. And it just goes. Pull off. But yeah, like I said, I don't really play like that usually. Um, but I think the reason why you do want to do it um, is to stay true to the recording. Because I think there's a slide in there. That you can actually hear it. But eh, for me, it's fine. I mean, this is the simpler. I mean, what looks more daunting is sliding out of this whole shape and adding your pinky right here, or going here and here. So, I don't know, you can take your take your choice. Yeah, there's actually one more variation to this song that I see some people play um, for the riff, and they pluck the middle string twice, and this is what I mean. So, um, you'll hear it. Ready? Which one sounds better? Do you want it like, or do you want just whatever sounds better for you? I think uh, both sound really good. Uh, depends what you want to do, and there you go. You have your options. Okay, now we're getting into the chords. I know I probably spent a really long time on that riff, but I just want to be as thorough as possible. Um, I'm not really sure now, but I think I might make a tab for it maybe on the screen. I don't know. We'll see what I do now. But uh, now the chords are going to be. E power chord, B power chord, C sh or no, G sharp power chord, and that's about it. That's all you need. Um, so what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be palm muting for the verse. So you know, have your palm like slightly touching the strings, and then 
do this. Uh, I think it's about like two measures each. So you hold that power chord. So it'd sound like E, B. sharp to be G sharp to be G sharp to be um, uh, again if you want to think of it like this um, the E power chord is just 0 2 2 B power chord 2 4 4 and then G sharp is um, 4 6 6 because I know not everybody will um, think of a note name like that but that's fine so um, yeah palm muted but then for the chorus you just go and don't palm mute and <laughs> just strum it all down strokes by the way this goes for the verse and chorus <laughs> I can't even speak English. Um, and that's what it should sound like. So, yeah. All right, we've made it to the last part of the song. It's the solo slash outro of the song. Um, the only small issue is that it doesn't really translate very well to acoustics, and especially not a nylon string classical. Um, basically, you would do a bunch of hammer-ons with the B string, fourth fret, um, and then just go... Um, yeah, you keep hammering on to the fifth. And then um, after that, you had to keep hammering on to the, the D string, fourth and sixth. Um, but then what you also do is you do power chords in between. So let me just demonstrate really quick. You do for a few times, uh, just as much as the song really re um, requires. And then um, you slide down. That's um, D, C sharp into B. And then go B to C sharp, and then do it again. C sharp B, B C sharp. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. That very last part, you do this. You slide. E to C sharp to D sharp. And it ends. That's it. I'm going to do it one more time. Whoops. And there you have it. That's it. That's Joyce Manor's Constant Headache guitar tutorial. I hope that you guys were able to uh, understand it clearly and that I was clear enough. And if, uh, if you have any questions, just be sure to let me know. Ask me in the comments. Um, stay tuned for more and uh, yeah see you later shit oh my god I suck at pick <laughs>